all right, sir? Mm, yes, thank you. It is just under 200 years since John Harrison returned to Barrow with the money to start construction of his marine clock, which I shall call Harrison One. No. Graham's money was not enough to feed his family and pay for tools and materials, so he was forced to continue with his work as a carpenter alongside construction of the marine timepiece. Mark that. Thus, alone, without advice or assistance, Harrison set out to tackle a problem that had defeated every other craftsman on Earth. His solution to the pendulum problem was a new kind of mechanism that was not affected by exterior movement. Two balances that could compensate for any angle at which the clock was held. He also incorporated into the structure the temperature compensation techniques that he'd used on his wooden clocks. And he then began a rigorous program of comparison between the sea clock and his original regulating clock. Keep it steady, will you? It's too close to the fire. That's nonsense. Now we have two enemies, the climate and the inclination of the oceans. We must be sure, as the piece is heated, be it by the Jamaican sun or by the fire, that the movement doesn't change. Is it cold enough in here? Yes. Uh, oh, that's good. Yes. Now, the rule set by the pendulum allows us to fix the motion to one twentieth of a second. Louder, James! Well, William. Six seconds. Four. So the seat clock is losing a second an hour to the pendulum clock. I must keep making adjustments, make it perfect. Each adjustment of the new machine required that it be fully dismantled, which is an extremely demanding task. I am now able to achieve this in a little under eight hours with the same time to be allowed again for reassembly. I have already had to do this four times. Harrison, when he was adjusting the clock, must have done it hundreds of times. Steady now. What are you doing? I mean to make another. But the third is almost ready. We can't afford to be distracted now. You've seen how the watchers performed in the test. It's not perfect. But what if I could make it so? What if I could make a timepiece no bigger than the span of a man's hand that could be taken to sea? Now, wouldn't that be a practical solution? Harrison's fourth machine, by reason alike of its beauty and its accuracy, must take pride of place as the most famous chronometer that ever has been or ever will be made. But the journey from his third machine, which you see behind me, to his fourth, thank you, is one of the most extraordinary mysteries of horology. Faced as he was by a seemingly insuperable problem of centrifugal forces, Harrison took a daring and lateral leap. It is as though an aeronautical engineer suddenly ceased development on a new aircraft and instead adapted the technology to make his bicycle fly to France. H4, as I've come to call it, resembles a large silver pair case watch, about five inches in diameter. Indeed, it seems to have been designed for the daily wear in the pocket of some Brobdingnagian. At the moment, it's not working. But that is a state of affairs that I hope very shortly to do something about. We should be finishing work on our third machine, not wasting time on this deck watch. Wasting our time? The machine is almost ready for its sea trial. And we've not had time to conduct a 28-day test on this watch, let alone three or six-month trial. I'll go when I'm ready, another four. Then we need to apply for more money. We cannot survive any longer than what we have. Mr. Jeffries at least should be paid, even if we are not. Are you unhappy, Mr. Jeffries? Me, sir? No, sir. There you see. Mr. 
Jackson. Here's to a successful voyage. I'd like to take another observation, if you don't mind, just to be sure. Indeed. Captain Lindsay. Certainly. Ah. Mr. Irwin. Just in time to witness our observation. Ah. We were expecting you to meet us. Uh, no one told us that you had arrived. And the transmission of information is not a strong point among the inhabitants of this island, I'm afraid. How is the voyage? Very satisfying. Where is masculine? Well, the man's an idiot. Could you hold this a moment? Uh, yes, of course. He has no understanding of my chair. Simply because a hinge broke on the second day out, causing him some very minor inconvenience, he's completely refused to use it. What sort of a scientist does that make him? 23 degrees of elevation. Another watch, uh, 357. That gives us a longitude of 59 degrees, 0 minutes and 30 seconds. Captain Lindsay, would you be kind enough to give me your signature, sir? Is that it? What do you mean? Is that all you do? I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Raymond. What did you expect? Mr. Green, would you care to witness? Oh, of course, Mr. Harrison. Well, the, the Reverend Masculine spends half the day calculating his sums, and with a good deal of bad temper besides.